Hello, and welcome to Recycled EV Content, demystifying the complex world of battery recycling, breaking down the technical so you don't have to. I'm Scott, and I'm so glad you're here. So I wanted to talk today about cathode active materials, and specifically with those cathode active materials, how they become cathode active materials, the steps that the materials have to take to get there, and what exactly that is. So first things first, if we want to talk about these cathode active materials, it's a bit of a mouthful. So I'm going to call those CAM, C-A-M. And so these uh, CAM materials or the cathode active materials, uh, it's lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt. And it's all that, uh, all the materials that are in a, in a lithium ion battery uh, in different chemistries. If you didn't see my last video where I talked about all the chemistries where it was NCA and NMC and really went into the breakdown there, I'll leave a link right up here. Um, so you can go ahead and watch that video. Uh, I think it's wor worth taking a look. That'll help you understand a little bit more in terms of how these chemistries of the batteries are broken down. So again, um, you've got the lithium, the nickel, cobalt, and manganese in the cathode active material. And so when we talk about this cathode active material, again, if you didn't see my first video where I talked about gingerbread, um, I'll put that one up here and you can go ahead and click that one. That one also, um, kind of plays into what I'm going to explain next. So this cathode active material, it is, it's like the dough that I talked about in that first video. So that all that material, the lithium, the nickel, cobalt, and manganese needs to be adhered to a foil. And when we're talking about cathodes, the cathode material is actually adhered to an aluminum foil. So once that material is glued to an alum aluminum foil, it gets rolled out and it enters into the, um, enters into the manufacturing steps. There's lots of, you know, much more technical aspects to that that avenue, but that's kind of where it where it lands there. But you may have also heard of um, copper copper foils, and there's a company out there right now, uh, Redwood. They're producing copper um, foils, and they're passing those copper foils onto Panasonic. Those copper foils aren't used in the cathode production. Copper is actually used in the anode, where they do the same thing, but they use the anode uh, active material, adhere it to the copper foil. And so now you've got your anode foil with your active material and your cathode foil, the aluminum with all those materials I just spoke about. Those two, um, those two foils essentially get rolled through the, um, through the manufacturing line. And then in between them, they put a, a separator, it's a, a membrane, and then they put a, um, an electrolyte. They sandwich them all together and they roll them through the manufacturing line. And when those um, go through, they, they refer to that as the jelly roll. But part of the... The step and what we talked about in that first video about the the dough when when they are rolling out these um, these foils and producing these cathode uh, materials there is again some scraps right so you're gonna get these trimmings of that that foils running out and maybe they need to trim the size or they're cutting uh, segments uh, of the roll all those little imperfections all those trimmings again are that that's a production scrap. So again, if you didn't see that video, worth worth taking a look and you can understand the production battery scrap. So again, once that's all rolled out, then you, you've got your anode, your cathode, your separator, and your electrolyte. Those then produce a cell and that cell is good to go to be put into a battery pack and put into an EV and, and used, used forever until it needs to be recycled. So, but what we want to talk about is how do we get that cathode active material? So if we go back one step further, prior to it becoming CAM or cathode active material, it was precursor cathode active material or, or PCAM as uh, it's known in the industry. So that precursor cathode active material has everything in it, the nickel, manganese, and cobalt, except the lithium. So there's no lithium in there. It's just the nickel, manganese, and cobalt. That precursor material has to be blended with the lithium once those two are blended they're they're baked in an oven they and then they produce that um, cathode active material that can be adhered to the uh, aluminum foil again so that's the, your precursor act uh, cathode active material so your pcam now if we go back one step further prior to these materials being pcam they were probably depending on the recycling process, because there's some re recycling process that, that skip this step, but um, they're, they were likely a battery metal salt or a crystal, crystallization of a particular battery metal, whether it was the nickel or the, the cobalt in, in crystalline form. And they take those 
powders in the crystalline form, blend them together to produce your uh, PCAM. Once that PCAM is produced, they take the lithium, they, they again, mix the lithium and the PCAM together, bake it all up, put it in that, uh, in the, uh, on the cathode uh, foil, and then you've got your, um, your cathode ready to go. So again, as I, as I said, I, I wanna keep these videos short and sweet, and I wanted to just really hit on this uh, PCAM versus uh, CAM and the battery metal salts. Uh, there are lots of companies out there that are working through the recycling process. Some are producing PCAM, some are producing battery metal salts. Um, all are valuable and um, it just depends on on which steps the the certain recyclers are going to cut out of the of their loop um, but one thing I will note that it is tricky for these recyclers to produce the cathode active material Be, not not that it's tricky to produce but there's already a supply to, or there's already manufacturers that are able to produce cathode active material from PCAM and lithium. So if these recyclers can supply PCAM and the lithium together, but not blended, the shipping and handling and the all the supply constraints with that is a lot easier than shipping the cathode active material. As well as the production of the cathode active material, it's a very delicate process. And the higher the nickel content in the in the batteries, as we get to those uh, NMC 811s or the 9 half half, the higher the nickel content, the more room for error there is when when they're bl when they're making the cathode active material. So again, that, that's those fancy clean rooms where the people are wearing the hazmat suits. So that's where these recyclers are really focusing on pr providing the PCAM, not so much as the cathode active material, and then working closely with a battery manufacturer to set, again close that loop. So if you have any questions or I didn't answer something fully in this in this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a, a comment down below or if you've got a suggestion of something else you'd like to hear me talk about on this channel, again, throw that in the comments too. Also, this is the part where I need your help. I'd really appreciate it if you went ahead and liked this video, if you found it useful, maybe even share it to a friend. Um, I, I know this this market is growing and it's it hasn't fully caught on. I, I was having a conversation with uh, an individual over the weekend and uh, I was talking about battery recycling and they're like, oh, well that doesn't, that's not even gonna come into play until these batteries are done. And again, talking about the production scrap. So he was he was shocked that, wow, there's so much material and, and we're seeing that happen quite often. So again, share these videos with your friends. Uh, go ahead and like, the, like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell and then you get notified anytime I, I release a new video. Um, as well, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like to support me through Patreon. Uh, that would be a huge help. And again, thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.